All right, Miranda, it looks like it's just me and you. At least for right now. Hilarious. <laughs> and hello, good morning. Yeah, good. <laughs> well, I'm here for it. All right, all right, sounds good. Well, we'll uh, tailor made it, make it just for you, so. <laughs> awesome, I'll get my laptop then. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, start with, I'm just going to walk through how to get into there, which uh, and you probably already know how to, but I will be uploading the video so that uh, it's available for others to see. So anyway, um, so you're going to sign in by going to 21 online. So go to 21 online, click the login or sign in button. You're going to go to sign in here. It's then uh, occasionally going to ask you for this code, which I don't know how often it does it, but you have to click send code. So it's going to text the code to me here. Let's see. Get it. And verify. All right, so now it should log me in here to 21 online from 21 online you're going to go to menu and then down to productivity hub right here. Oh, we got Lisa joining us welcome Lisa. All right, so from. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Once you're into the productivity hub, you're just going to scroll down. It's in alphabetical order. I'm going to get down here to where it shows Moxie present. I'm going to click on go to Moxie. That's now going to take me to this Moxie hub. I think that's what this is called is the hub. But you'll notice up here at the top is it's got present, engage, my website, and impress. So we're going to talk today about present. So you're going to just click on present right here. That's now going to take us into the Moxie present. And this system actually is really a pretty simple, I don't know if either of you have used it for doing a CMA, but it's actually a very simple way. Um, the only thing that I will say on it is um, if you're looking to do detailed um, searches on the properties, then it's probably going to be better to start with the MLS to find the properties that you want to use. And then I'll show you how you would bring them uh, into the system here. So, so from here, you'll see it's got me on the my presentations. There is a spot for if you're on a team for team presentations or brokerage presentations. But for the most part, you're just going to be in the my presentations section right here. So from this my presentations section to create and do a CMA and and the listing presentation printout stuff you're going to click up here on create new from this create new then it's it's first going to have me sh select what type of a presentation is this so the options you can see here is the the seller presentation which is what you're going to use probably most of the time there is a property review where you could um, create a personalized review of a property. There's the buyer tour. There's a buyer um, presentation and a non listing. So, like I said, most of the time you're probably going to use the seller. So I'm just going to click on seller here and then I'm going to hit continue. Which so. Um, just real quick, because I know we had Ruth Ann looks like joined us, and then I already mentioned Lisa, but uh, I don't have anybody in the room. It's, well, I know we do. I never mind. I take that back. I do have someone in the room now. So, hang on one second. I'm going to get the screen pulled down and turned on here, so we can see. So, all right. Sorry. Give me one second here, and we'll get going. Again. Turn the light on. 
lights off so that you can see Luz. So Thank you. Luz just walked into the room, so I do have someone in the room with me now. So I was what I was going to say, though, was for um, you guys that are online, I was going to say, since no one's in the room, if you have questions, ask. But even though now Luz is in the room, if you have questions, you can still ask. How many do you have online? There's three. Okay. Right now. Okay. So, oh, go ahead. Real quick, for several months, I've had an impossible time getting into 21 online, and it probably has to do with my old profile here in Midvale and then my old profile in Hawaii, and now my new profile. So I just am stuck there, and I've been wanting to get in. I'm just not sure the way to do that. Okay. Um, so on yours, does um, you have your login information, though? Well. Yes, but it doesn't work. And then I go to forget password and that doesn't get me anywhere. Okay. So I'm super stuck. Because <laughs> what I was going to recommend, and maybe this is worth trying, is up here at the top, type in just um, pr present.century21.com okay. and then hit enter and see if that it'll then ask for your username and password which would be your 21 online but i would recommend maybe trying that and seeing if should, that should uh, i look at my computer and work. see if i can log in it's up to you it's up to you Does so it, not even do me any good <laughs> okay so uh but if not marinda then probably well have you tried calling the help desk for yeah and i haven't been able to make any headway with them either that doesn't make any sense so the next step I would say would be to maybe talk to Mackenzie then and see if she can maybe remove you out of the back end system and put you back in to see if that would work. Okay. If she has any suggestions, maybe I don't know. Okay. Um, cool. I'm still if the help desk didn't help, I don't know I'm kind of stuck as to what that would be then. So okay, I'm gonna try to adjust the projector here. I know you guys aren't seeing it, but there we go. Okay. It was just off the screen here a little bit. All right. So now that we have selected that it was the seller that we're doing this for, the next step is, is up here is to pick a template. So the different options that you have on this drop down here are my templates, the brokerage templates, or Century 21. Um, which is nationally the templates that are available. I believe those, I don't think we have under the brokerage templates. Yeah, I think we just have this default seller one. So typically what you're probably gonna wanna do is select the Century 21 real estate. And you'll notice as I select that, now it's brought up, it gives me the option for a commercial listing presentation, a fine homes and estates presentation to print, a fine homes and estate presentation for a tablet, the national residential listing presentation, and then a Spanish language residential um, listing presentation. So typically, I would just say go through and select whichever of these you're wanting to use. Most of the time, though, you're probably going to want to start with this national residential listing presentation. So I'm going to select that. You're going to hit continue. And then the next thing that it's asking for is me to name this presentation. So I usually just name it the day of the class when I'm doing this. So you would probably want to put the seller's name though. Um, but from there, it's going to ask the listing source, which you shouldn't need to do anything with that as far as changing that, is you should just be able to leave that kind of where it's at. Um, and then the next thing know? down is, do you want the presentation design to be the classic or the luxury? And I'll be honest, I haven't actually looked at the luxury. I probably should so that I can know what that looks like. But typically, you're probably just going to want to use the classic. If you are going after a fine homes and estate, you probably would want to use the fine homes and estate presentation. But then here it's saying, do you want it to do things based on total square footage, total finished square footage, or the above grade finished square footage? So what that would be for is there are some areas of the country where they're using um, 
just finished square footage. There's others that say it's just the above grade square footage. For us, on our MLS, we typically are doing our presentations and things by total square footage. So you would want to just leave it as that. That should be the default. But if not, you probably want to use it as total square footage. So, but again, you can decide. All right, so once I've got all that in, I'm going to hit create. That now has brought me to this uh, presentation here. It's thinking about it still. Sorry. Thought it was. There we go. Yes, you do the center, that center plane. And so from here, you can see it's got the presentation name, which I put in today's date, which again, you probably would want to put your seller's name or the address of the property, whatever it is you're wanting to do. Uh, the next step down is if you have a previous MLS number for the property, then you can type it in right there. So you could get an MLS number from off of the MLS if, it, if the property had already existed. And what that's going to do is that's just going to help you not have to type in a whole bunch of information. So I'm clicking in there and you can see that I had a previous MLS. So I'm just going to select one of those. And then just. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're good. I just was going to ask you if that was a question for me or someone else. So no worries. Okay. So, uh, from here, you can see under these tips, copied MLS data is static and will not automatically update and use copied MLS data for a quick start and customize as needed. So that's usually what I recommend is if the property has been on the MLS before, put in that MLS number, click copy here. So, that's gonna then pull it, plug it in. Go ahead. So when, how can I find the, what you were saying commercial or, 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 or where do you go? So you have to do create new. So we're going back. So you got to do create new. Oh, okay. Then from there is where you're going to select probably you want seller. Okay. Then you do continue. Okay. So create new. Yep. All right. Okay. So the next thing is, as I scroll down here, um, if I had contacts in and I wanted to, to put somebody from my contacts, I could type that in and it's going to pull up contacts there so I could select from there if I wanted to. But you'll notice down here, it has plugged in the address of the property. It's given me a map showing me where that property fits what the MLS area is, the, the neighborhood, the subdivision, is, and, and you can see it's brought in all this data from the MLS. So that's where I was saying it's probably worth um, doing that to, to if, if the property has been on, putting the MLS information in there, because then you could just come through and modify any of the information that you wanted to, uh, to change in there. So, Make sense? Oh. Okay. So we're going to get all that put in there. You'll notice it brings even in the remarks from the MLS. So you may want to go in and just remove those out of there unless you wanted to leave them in, but you're probably not necessarily wanting those remarks showing in your CMA. Um, all right. So now we've got the information in here. And, if, and like I said, if there wasn't an MLS number, you could go through and, and put it in. You also could upload a picture of the house if you want uh, that to show up in the, the uh, printout that you're going to get from this. You could do that as well. So, okay, now that we've got that in, I'm just going to come down here and I click on continue. So the next step, which uh, if you look up here at the top, we started with just putting in the subject property information. The next thing is where we're at now, which is on the search. So if for some reason I wanted to go back onto the subject property, I could click this and it would take me back that step to do that. So now we're in the search part. So on this search, it has pulled up the address of the property. And so it's doing it based on location and it's doing it off the address. If I wanted to do it off MLS number, I could click that and put that in here. You'll notice it's now got a star here for where the subject property is, and then it's showing here's the homes that have sold 
in the area that's showing on this map. So if I wanted to zoom in a little closer, I can zoom in and then you'll notice it's going to narrow down from 74 listings. It's taken me down now to 16. So if I wanted a bigger area, I could zoom out and then you'll see it's gone back to the 74. If I wanted to go even further out, I can do that and it's going to now give me 138. So obviously you don't want that many properties showing. So from there though, because again, if we're doing this like we're doing a CMA for our seller, we probably only really want to get a few, a handful of solds, a handful of actives, and a handful of pendings. So what I would want to do then is decide, do I want a specific more, sorry, do I want to, um, what's the word, I lost it. Do I want to focus on more just the neighborhood that it's in, or do I want to try to get like an area that I would find properties similar to what you would do if you were doing a search on the MLS? Okay, so I'm going to do it to say I want to try to find properties that are similar to this one rather than just the neighborhood. So I'm going to go to multi draw here and I'm going to say, okay, the property is right here. I don't want to go past this uh, road out here and I let's maybe say I only want to go to 70th South over here to Airport Road and here. Okay. So by doing that, you're going to see now it's going to now narrow down the number of properties. So it's given us 86. Well, I still don't really want 86 properties. So now I'm going to narrow it down based on some of the other filters. So I could do it by price or beds and baths. But I'm going to start out with just of saying, okay, I only want single family. Now, if for some reason I wanted to include condos or townhouses, I can select those. I don't want them, so I deselect them. It's going to show me properties that are active on the MLS, and I could narrow it down to more than or less than a certain number of days, but I'm just going to say, as far as active, I want all of those. Okay. So square footage, the square footage on this house, let's just say it was 1,800. So I'm going to come in here and say I want from 1,600 to 1,999 square footage. I see the rentals. I well, I, yeah, I could select rentals. That's it's not include. Only, it's only including the ones I'll that are highlighted. The same yeah. Uh -huh. So, like, if I wanted to include condos, I would do that. Uh -huh. Taking it off, I'd do that. Uh -huh. So it's not including any of those. Right now. Okay. So if I wanted to specify based on lot size or the acreage, either way. So you can see I can switch it to acreage here or square footage. But I'm not going to worry too much about that. I am going to say year built. Let's do like out in that area from like 1989 to 1998, whatever. And then the other options you can see is waterfront, which doesn't apply. I could select views, single story homes, garages. So this is where I was saying, you'll, you kind of want to keep an eye on it from the standpoint of, do I want to include more than just what's showing here. So really, the main thing with this, this is where I'm saying is, if I'm doing a detailed uh, CMA, I probably want to get the properties from the MLS and then bring them in to here. And I would do that by doing selecting this MLS number, and then I could type in the MLS numbers of the properties that I wanted to include. So hopefully that makes sense. The other thing that we can do here is for the solds is I can select and say, I want sold for the last six months, or I could do three months or 30 days. So I'm going to change it to three months. So that's the other thing that question a lot of times people have is, is how far back is this looking for solds? And it's all dependent on what you do right here. So I'm going to say in the last three months, and then do I want to have it show pending, off market, contingent, expired, sale failed, canceled? I'm just going to say I only want to see um, the solds and pendings. I don't want off market or contingent, but maybe we'll say we want uh, 
expired. So pending is what they would call, we call it under contract, they call it pending. And in what time frame? So again, you, I'll say the last 60 days for those. And then I could include short sale types of short sale or bank owned or sale types. So I'm just gonna hit apply. Let's see what that gets for us on here. So that just narrowed it down to 10. And if I look at the 10 it's given me, it's got two solds here, a pending, an active, a sold, some more pendings, a few more solds and an active. So that's probably pretty good. If I had 10 properties there and it's given me what, four solds, three pendings and two active, I think, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm good with that, then I can just move on. If for whatever reason I wanted to change the area over here, I could clear that by clicking up here and I could redraw in here. Or if I wanted to narrow it down by beds or baths, like I said, I could do that there or price. But we'll, we'll say this is good enough. Okay? So now that I've got that selected, these properties, so these are the 10 properties it's going to include. I'm just going to hit continue. So now we've done subject property. We just did our search. And so now it's under this display order here that, uh, that I can decide how I want it to, to display. So if, you know, if I had multiples of property, did I not select? No, I didn't. That's why. I was like, something went wrong there, but I just realized what it was. It's still in the search. Yeah, so from here, I forgot to select the properties. So I could go through and just decide, hey, I don't want to use all of these. So I can go through and individually click on the plus sign on the picture, and that will add them into the properties I want to use. Or in this case, because I'm good with all 10, I'm just going to do include all. So now it's selected all 10. You can see up here listings that I've chosen as 10, whereas it was zero. So now we're going to hit continue. Sorry, I skipped a step there. You'll notice under this under this display order here, there is a spot to add more listings to if you wanted to. But uh, now that it's built, it's got two active, three pendings, and five sold. So I think I said four, four, and two, but two, three, and five. So from here, then we've got our subject property. And remember, if I had uploaded a picture, it would have a picture of the house here as well. So how picture uh, you can do it? Can you show me that one? To add a picture here? Uh -huh. Yeah, so if I wanted to add the picture here, I'd have to go back to subject property. Uh -huh. And then right here, I can either browse or do MLS. So let me subject. see. Let me see if I can get the. Oh, no, no, the MLS number was. Let me copy that. So you have to. I think it the... must not be pulling up a picture. I'll bet the MLS number that I selected didn't have a picture. Uh, you have to copy the MLS number and then copy. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go back to the listings here, though. So that's how I would add that. So this display order, I can have it ordered by price, high to low. You know, I can do any of this. I could do distance, which you might want to do that. However you want to sort these, it's going to do that. So here's our subject property. You can see it's pulled in um, these others. And this is doing it based on how far away they are from the property. Was that the display order that I just chose? So again, whatever display order you want to use, but you'll notice on these, I can see the listing details, I can edit, edit remarks, I can add adjustments. So if for some reason there was something about this property that, um, you know, it had, it included gold bars, I don't know, mm -hmm. I could come in here and say, you know, gold bars, and oh, it's got $10,000. No water, oh, just something, you know. Yeah, whatever it is, and I can just throw in an amount and say, okay. So now it's going to help on doing those adjustments there. Okay. So you would just go through these properties to make sure you're good with including them. And you can, if not, you can click the X here to get rid of them. But I just am looking through saying, yep, these properties are all great. It's showing me the breakdown here of the square footage, the price, all that kind of stuff. 
If I'm good with it, I just hit continue. If not, then like I said, I would either remove them, make any adjustments. I could go back and change the search to get any of that. Um, if I had a custom listing, maybe a for sale by owner that I knew about, I could add that in there as well. All right, next step then is I'm going to click continue. That's now going to bring me to this estimate page. So from here, it's saying that the pricing for this property based on the average sales should be 475. And then it's figuring out, you know, a price per square foot here, what the square footage was. Here's the listing summary, the lowest, the highest, the average. And then for, that's for all of them. And then here it's breaking it down for the actives. The lowest is 404, highest is 499. So the active is there or excuse me, average is there, same thing with pending, same thing with sold. So in the solds, you can see it went. So really, this is interesting for me, looking at this, what we pulled up would tell me home prices are starting to drop in that area or have been dropping because it's showing the low is 460, high was 490, but the pendings are 450 to 499. So slightly down. But like when you look at your averages, they're even showing slightly a little more now. So anyway, but so this is just giving me a chance that I can do that. I can have my estimated pricing in here and you can either throw in a dollar amount or you could do create a range and then you could have it do, you know, a percentage of that. Um, I don't know why it's throwing in the 125 there. but Anyway, so I could say, let's just say we thought it was 450. Mm -hmm. So I could put that in there, or if I wanted to do the range, I could say between 445 uh -huh. and 475 or something, whatever. So now it would have a range in there. And then I could type in some remarks here. The other thing you can do from this page that I want to point out is the estimated net proceeds. Uh -huh. So if you click on that, this is where you can put together a seller's net sheet for them. So I can take the estimated proceeds, and then from here, I could go through and put in how much their mortgage is. So let's just say it's 325. Um, you can put in the commissions here. You can put in you know, the estimated sell, sell price, let's just say 450. So by putting in that sold price, you'll notice up here it had 450, what the seller's cost is, how much their net proceeds should be. And because before it wouldn't let me put in a percentage because I didn't have a dollar amount up there. Now that I do, I can say we're going to be 3% to the listing office, 3% to the selling office, um, escrow fees, title insurance. You know, I'm just making stuff up here. Mm -hmm. So you can type it by yourself, yeah? Yep, yeah. you just type in what it is. You can put in other costs in here. And then I could create custom costs as well. So if I wanted to put in some additional custom costs in here, I could just type it in and, and add and just keep adding more and more custom. And then you'll notice up at the top though, it's got me this estimated net proceeds there for, for the seller. So now that I've got the estimated pricing, I've got the estimated net proceeds in here. I'm gonna come down and hit continue. All right, so now that I have put all that information in here, it's now taken me to the pages. So you can see it's showing there's 54 pages for this. So you're not gonna wanna use all 54 pages, I don't think. But what your next step would be is to go through and decide which of the pages you wanna use. So here's what your cover page is gonna look like. If I go to property summary, it would have a picture of the house in right here if I had one but it's showing single family built 1993. It's got all the information about the schools, all of that information in here, okay? So you just are gonna look at it, decide if you're good with it. If you like it, then leave it. If not, you'll see it's got an X here that I can remove. So if I were to go, I'm not gonna go through all 55 pages, but we'll kind of spot do a few of them. So this is the listing location map. You can see it's gonna show where the properties are on here. 
and it's got them up here at the top as well. So if you like it, leave it. Otherwise, you could remove it. You'll notice this one you could edit. So if I click on edit here, that's going to give me the option up here of displaying or not showing. So you can do that. Uh, uh, next is the listing overview. So this is going to show you the solds and it's just giving you a really short brief, but you'll see here very quickly why I'm saying you don't want to use all 55 pages. Mm -hmm. So you just would want to look and see, do I like this? Do I like the way it looks? If I do, keep it in. If you don't, click the X to get rid of it. Just a little bit like uh, compare the, what is the outside, the, the style of the house and something, yeah. Yeah, this one, yeah, that's all it's going to do is it's just going to show you here's the sold, here's what the picture looked How like. Many bedrooms? Uh -huh. Yep. Okay. Next is the side by side comparison. So this one's going to give you more of like looking like what an appraisal looks like. So again, if you like that, leave it in. If you don't like it and want to get rid of it, then you can X that out or you could again click on edit and you can decide which boxes you want it to. To show or not show mm -hmm. so you can see that's where you would edit any of that all right next in is the status comparison so again this is where you hopefully are now starting to see if you did all 55 pages it's probably going to be overkill because yeah. this one's going to break it down by here's the actives and the information the pendings the solds mm -hmm. same thing so you decide if you like it next is listing averages and this is going to show you the you know average, the low, the average, the medium, the high for um, the homes. And you can see I've got active, pending, and sold. So I can decide which I want to include or not include in that. Next one is the price and days on market, which is kind of a little bit of a confusing chart here. But it's going to show based on how many days the properties were on the market, what they sold for. So it's going to, it's got kind of this scatter plot graph showing where they're at. So if you like it, want to use it, keep it. Otherwise, delete it. Next one is the price and size. I'm going to start skipping some of these here in just a second. So you can see this one's kind of similar. So this is yeah. the same type of a chart. It's price, but at the bottom, it's based on the square footage. Uh -huh versus the um, days on market. This pricing analysis would have a picture of the house here again and show some pricing stats here. The net proceeds is what we had created where we did this net proceeds showing they'd get $90,000 from the sale. And then you'll see all of the fees that I put in, it breaks them down right there. Uh, next is your agent profile. So it's your information. There's a checklist that's available if you want to use the checklist. Mm -hmm. But you'll see there's really nothing on it right there. So what? So oh, sorry, it does have it. It just had quite loaded there. So it just shows kind of some of the things that what does it take to sell a home. So as where we're getting into now is most of this stuff is not going to be things you can edit. So this is where you'll just want to and this is where I'm going to now skip around is is if I just click on selling your home, you're just going to decide, do you like that? Do you want to leave it in? If you do leave it, otherwise um, take it out. Here's your proposal to work with them. I'm all ears. So this is where you're just going to go through and just, you would look through and de decide which ones you want to keep, which ones you don't. Um, and like I say, all, the rest of this is all going to be just standard. The first few pages there that have these pencils that you can adjust are all going to be things that um, you may want to adjust. The rest of these, you're just deciding, do I want to leave it in or take it out? Um, okay. Up there. Up. So now once I've done that, so here's a seller questionnaire that you could go through, you know, do I have sufficient data to price my property realistically? Am I familiar? You know, these are just questions you could ask them or give to them before you even show up as a pre-listing package. Okay. All right.
So let's say that I go through and I'm like, I don't want to do social media. Um, maybe they're not worried about relocation. Um, Twelve things, I don't know, whatever. Let's say that I just, whatever things I don't want in here, I could go through and get rid of those. Okay. Now, once I've done that, I'll show you why this is important once you've done it. So once I've gone through and put all that information in here, the next step up here is for me to decide how I'm wanting to do this. Do I want it to be a web view or a print view? So that web view would be if I'm going to be sending it to them you know, as an email or something, then it's going to give them the view more built for looking at on a, on a computer or on an iPad or something if you're going to be sitting there in front of them. The print view is going to design to where it's going to print on eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper. So you can see it changes up the, the size of a lot of these things, you know, based on that listing averages and stuff. So if you're doing the print view, you could just print it from right here. If I'm on the web view, you'll notice it takes the printer away. So I couldn't print from the web view anyway. So from here, I have the options up at the top to where I could do a, um, I could click on that view here. And again, a web or a print. And so it's gonna create basically a PDF here of this, but it takes a few minutes to build it. So it's gonna give me the ability to though to, to view that. So let's see. Still going. All right. The next the other option would be to do send. So if I click on send, this is where I could send this presentation. And I could do it as a PDF or the presentation. Send it out to somebody from, from right there. I can go into my settings. And under the settings is where if I wanted to change the name or any of these other settings, I could do that. And more is where, again, I would either share this, create a quick flyer, any of those type of things. All right. So, any questions on this? So, once it's down, so you need uh, just show that that uh, seller everything if they agree, so we will be able to list it to MLS. Yeah. 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 This, so the idea uh, of which this, prices we can we have to. Yep. Uh, yep. The idea of this would be to sit down with them. I would go through this, uh -huh. or you could send it as a pre-listing packet if you wanted to. Uh -huh. But yeah, the idea would be now that we've talked about it, we've looked at the comparables, mm -hmm. we decide on a price and then go ahead and get their property listed. So I'm gonna click on the home button here. And what you'll see is it's going to, oh shoot, I just realized one thing I didn't show you that I meant to, so let me go back. Okay, so from here, after I've gone through and I've deleted all the pages I don't mm -hmm. want to use, mm -hmm. you can do this save as a template. So that's the other thing where what you would want to do is do save as template and then I gotta move some stuff here. Okay, so uh, I've got, I can put in a custom title. So this is where I can again name it. Um, you could name this as my default pre default presentation or something or whatever you wanted to name it but but this would be for sellers and I'm just going to save that so the reason I would want to do that is now that I've gone through and I deleted all the pages I don't want to use if I'm never going to want to use them the next time I, that I go through and create a, a CMA I can actually grab that saved template I'll show you what I mean here so okay so I'm going to go back to home and it has saved this presentation here. So you'll see it's right here, December 5th, 2023 class. So mm -hmm. it's saved right here. Mm -hmm. 
But if I were going to do a new presentation and I select seller, I can then go to my templates and you'll notice it's going to have the saved templates in there. Although, I don't remember what, oh, I named it default. Huh? So there's my default presentation. So I could select that. That way I don't have to go through and delete all the pages that I did before. So, anyway. so it'll keep, it'll save all of your presentations right here. So from here, um, I can come up and do an edit if I want to, which would just take me back in there to do edits onto that presentation. Go back to the whole page here. And then I can share, email from here, duplicate, delete. I can archive it, make a quick flyer. I can assign it to somebody else or add a co-presenter from here as well. So anyway, that's how simple it is. Okay. Is that simple, Luz? <laughs> <laughs> I have to go to Century 21, uh, my website, yeah? Yeah, you start with 21 online. Okay, okay. Okay. Well, if you're going through it a few times, it will get easier. Yeah, and, and that's the other thing. So keep in mind, I am going to um, save this and upload it to our YouTube channel, so you so you can go back and watch it. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So, but that's what the, that's all there is to it. So email to me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I I will be have a presentation for next year. But maybe in um, January or something, my friend's gonna be selling her house. Oh, gotcha. Okay, cool. All right, well, thank you all for being here. That's, uh, that's all I got for today. Thanks, Russ. Thank you. Thank you, Russ. So, this is a uh, continuing education, yeah? Russ? No. no. No, this is not C. So, uh, when is continuing education? Um. I don't for this month. think I have one scheduled for this month. I think January is the next CE class. I don't think there's one mm -hmm. scheduled. I don't, I'm not aware of one for this month. Typically, we don't do one in December because the later we get into December, the less people okay. show up. So. so, Ross, I have a question.